I met a gypsy. Before I went to Romania, because this is like, oh, it all went well, Erzberg went well, and then I was doing like um, the British Sprint Enduro Championship, like the classic enduro, and obviously I, was, I wasn't that good at it, but I was like progressing really fastly, and it all just kind of, I felt like, you know, I, I felt like I was the boy, to be honest, I was like, oh, I've got this figured yeah. out, like, this is, this, is, this is the shit, like, this is what I was meant to be doing, like, this is all good, and then... Um, it was all going well. Then I went to Romania because and realized, okay, these guys are fucking gnarl- a lot gnarlier than I thought. Like, I need to man up before I can get anywhere near these guys. So that was kind of a a culture shock. But to be honest, um, the Romaniacs, the the prologue, which is like the first day of racing, which is in the city, um, is like a super mental contraption. They build all sorts of crazy obstacles and stuff like that. Like basically racing like an arena trial section in the city. Yeah. And um, there was a press day the day before. And uh, like not many people could barely even get around the track. Everyone's getting stuck everywhere. And then I was just like, thought this was brilliant. There's cameras on us all over the place. I'm like wheeling everywhere. There's a video. I think there's probably like 12, 13 logs in a row and like a balance beam to go over them, but I was just like missing the balance beam and just like wheel tapping. I wheel tapped the whole way through and um, that video went, it still pops up every now and again now. That's from 2016 and I still get tagged in it like all over the place. Um, so that kind of press day was probably, um, and I've spoke to like the Husky team manager and stuff since and he's like, no, that pr- like after Esberg, we were pretty much decided we were going to sign you. Then that press day was like, that was it. The deal was done. So thankfully, the press day went well, and then in the, the the prologue, I think I finished fourth. Um, I was I was second for most of it, but I just died. Like at this time as well, I had no fitness whatsoever. Like I was trying <laughs> to figure out what to do, but it was still also new. Like every race, I would just die of like fitness cramps, everything like that. So, um, the, he said the the press day was when he sealed well, sealed the deal, and uh, I guess it's thanks to that video of his wheelie and through the logs. So if any kids are out there watching anytime there's a chance to to show off just go and show off as much as you possibly can because it definitely helped me dude it's so crazy like so you have just basically no money no job yeah nothing i i was literally um i had a a sponsor like a a long-term sponsor and i was a little kid who i'd like to go and work at for like two three days a week literally just get enough money in cash to just put some I had a, I had a um a little van that I was because I was so young I couldn't get any insurance on a on a van like a normal van so I had to have this like it's a certain bilingo with like windows all the way through it was like a disabled van that's literally what it is like what you'd wheel a wheelchair into the back of so I'm driving around in this I used to have to fold the front seat down and and strap the forks down <laughs> so like because the the handlebar height was too high to fit in the roof and then the the back wheel used to have to go into the passenger seat. So I'm driving around in this, like literally getting like enough money to, to survive. I'd, I'd work maybe it's like the Monday or the Tuesday, just doing labor jobs, literally whatever they'd want us to do, just just to get enough money to go to go and ride for the rest of the week. And then I'd be like, yeah, whatever. Scra- like taking tires out the bin from like the demos, uh, Graham's mechanics workshop and whatever else he was throwing out. I'd be like, oh, I can have this. And just just fully scrounging it to get by. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, like I say, I'd pretty much... I borrowed the money off my mom to get, to get the bike and, and kind of just my parents would give everything to kind of get us to where, where I was, which, you know, I'm always thankful for, but they had nothing left. They were kind of still helping us wherever they could or for the, if there were some flights or whatever, and just kind of beg stealing and borrowing off everybody relying on sponsors for that year. But kind of by the, the midpoint of, of that year, it was kind of, Start to get a little bit of help for KTM for parts and bikes and stuff like that um, for the second half of the year. And it was kind of looking like I was going to get the factory ride for the year after. But um, yeah, literally from from a year of just full big steel, borrow, whatever, ha- just getting by to, to riding for the factory team. And what was it like to sign that, that contract and see the dollar sign? Like I'm sure it, it's gotten bigger since then, but to just see some zeros... On a yeah, it was mad. Like team. to be honest, it was looking back. I feel like they definitely had a good deal for the first couple of years. Like they really, they were, they weren't. Uh, they could have definitely been a little bit more generous. Um, <laughs> but no, it was it was mad. Like it was like the proudest one of the proudest moments of my career. I would say just to to finally, you know, 
be able to call yourself like a factory rider, a professional rider is like what I'd wanted since forever. Like I'd never ever at any point in my life thought I was going to be anything else. Um, mm. Like that's literally all I ever wanted to do since I was a kid. That's all I could remember. I used to play like every other sport when I was in school. I was on every team, but at the, at the end of the day, like I was going to be a motorbike rider no matter what. And like I was not despite like my dad would constantly just be like this isn't happening forever like you're going to be having a job soon because we can't afford to do this anymore like he was like the most down to earth parent ever like he never once kind of blew smoke up my arse or like said like he was like the complete opposite I'm like no no it's fine I'm, I'm gonna I'll sort it out I'll be all right I'm gonna be a professional right I don't worry and he was like no oh, you're fucking getting a job soon son because this isn't lasting forever like you'll be, you'll be having a job before long and like to finally just just know like all right like now i'm not relying on anybody else to go and ride my bike anymore and like and this is difference from being like literally reusing every part to its the in with an inch of its life to take a yeah. broken part or whatever then just like the fact i remember my first ever factory bike came i was just like a practice bike came in like the december time um i was actually injured i couldn't ride it till the january and um I, it was January in the UK like I went and rode in just this this field which is about an hour from my house just shit all like an absolute mud fest but I just wanted to ride my new bike and I'm literally just like riding around this absolute swamp of a field and uh, it's at like a, a farm a local farm and uh, I washed it there just I washed it afterwards with the jet wash there and it's obviously like a big agricultural jet wash it, it blew the rear fender sticker clean off and I'm like, oh shit! I don't know if I need to keep that. So like, I remember I've, st I've still got it. Um, in the it's in under like the sun visor of my van. I thought I better keep this sticker just in case they need to put it on for like the first race. And looking back, I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, if we need these new stickers every time I ride the bike, if that's what's necessary. You know what I mean, like the difference of just just parts and and possibilities of you know you want this, you want lower handlebars, you want higher foot pegs, you want a higher seat, you want to change. You know, you want a shorter shock, you want a longer foot, like just the the amount of resources that you have, literally just like that, like within the change from the end of December to beginning of January, it's just like the the world kind of just, I like I just unlocked a new world. I'm just like, wow, we're here now. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.